Good day everyone, welcome back to my channel. On my previous video, I've actually illustrated how I test all the PC components before I place into a case itself. For those of you who actually wanted to watch that video, I will leave the uh, URL on my top right hand corner. So do take a look on that. And there are some important pointers which I've actually listed on that video itself. Now for today, right, I will be illustrating on how to configure the uh, board itself and to actually install the uh, operating system. In my previous video, I've actually shown you I have only plugged one M.2 on the top slot over here. Reason being, right, this lane here is actually controlled by the processor itself. And the other two, which is actually located at the bottom, is controlled by the X570 chipset. In order to actually maximize the performance of the uh, operating system, make sure that you actually install to the top slot. Now, let me take you to the panel and to show you how I actually prepare the uh, operating system and to configure the motherboard itself. In order for me to install the operating system in my build, I will need to create the Windows 10 thumb drive. You have to actually proceed to this page. I will leave this URL in my description. Once you have actually come to this page, download this tool known as Create Windows 10 Installation Media and click on Download. I've actually downloaded on my desktop, launch the application, and you'll see this interface. Agree to the terms, then select on create installation media. This is, this is to actually install the uh, Windows image on your thumb drive. As you can see here, right, I've actually plugged my thumb drive in my system. And do take note that when you're creating this media itself, right, the thumb drive, whatever data you have inside, right, it will be erased. So just click on next. Now on this page itself, right, you are able to actually select the architecture itself. But I don't think anybody will actually do 32 bit. So just leave it as recommended, which is at 64 bit. Then click on next. Select on the USB thumb drive. When you click on next, right, it will show you which thumb drive is available. So make sure that it's the correct thumb drive. So mine, just to double check, is actually the F drive. And here is F drive. Then proceed. Now, this will take some time. While waiting for the image to actually complete in my thumb drive, I'd like to share with you two interesting YouTube channels. The first channel is actually done by Darius Sivilius. He's a good friend of mine. In this channel, he share his workouts with you. So if you are into fitness, right, do come by to this channel. And there are interesting ways of actually doing workouts, especially this period of time, work from home. Besides this, he does share his uh, method of preparing food and how to actually keep healthy. And also to actually illustrate some of the uh, meditation methods to keep your body well maintained. So if you guys are into fitness, do drop by to this channel. I'll leave the URL at my top right hand corner so that you can actually drop by. Now, when you're in his channel, do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button. Next will be this gentleman known as Nikus Renters. Now, I just get to know his page and I must say that his review right are spot on. And I was actually recently looking for generation 4 um, M.2's SSDs and it happened that he does very thorough reviews as you can see over here so he compares with various brands of M.2's and diagnoses them and to explain to you the pros and cons and to make you aware of certain things like customer service do drop by at his channel I'll again leave the URL at my top section here so that you can actually just click on it and do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button. Now, the image is actually done on the thumb drive itself. You can actually just click on finish. The image created is actually for Windows 10. I am not going to install Windows 10. Instead, I will be installing Windows 11. So it happened that I have this ISO file for Windows 11. I'm going to mount this. There is a way to actually place the image into a Windows 10. Uh, image itself. I've learned this from a YouTube channel from Brian from Yes City. So this is actually what he does. Go to the uh, source folder of the Windows 10 image that you've created. Then 
look for a file name called install.esd delete this off once this is done right go to your windows 11 image click on the source folder then look for install win let's see where the image here is here you go so i'll just copy this over to my thumb drive and once this is done right i shall begin to actually install the uh, image on my system itself time to install the windows 11 into my build and i'm going to plug in the thumb drive and to boot up the system It's going to take time to load and make sure that you enter the uh, UEFI or BIOS mode. I'll just press delete when the screen is fresh. Alright, on the BIOS itself, let me just close this window over here and to open up. Now, this is actually the BIOS or UEFI mode. Now, things to check, right? Make sure that the time and date is correct. Then probably you might want to check that your M.2 is listed here. If not, then you will not be able to actually install the Windows 11 on the M.2 itself. Now, next thing I will do, right, I will go to the uh, advanced mode, which is F2. Oh, by the way, this is actually a Gigabyte Aorus Master X570 board. So next thing I'll do, right, I will actually set the XMP profile. I know a lot will advise not to actually do this when you install the uh, Windows uh, Windows OS. But for me, right, I'll just do it straight. Reason being, if you were to actually hit into problems when you're installing the OS, right, you'll know that your RAMs is not able to actually run on the XMP profile. So this is how I actually do it. I'd rather do it now rather than do it later. And I'll do the uh, FCLK, which is actually the Inf Infinity Fabric to the timing of my RAMs, which is 3200 hertz, where I divide by 2, right, it's 1600. Now, something which is actually very important for you to actually install um, Windows 11, that is, head down to the miscellaneous, whereby you have this so-called trusted computing, or known as the TPM for some bots, and for ASRock, right, I believe it's actually FTPM make sure it's actually enabled on the uh, security device support. If not, you can't install Windows 11. Next, all you need is actually to save and to boot up the system again. By the way, when you're booting, right, make sure you select to the drive that you wanted to boot. Sometime you need not have to do so. If let's say your M.2 is empty, you will just boot straight to your um, USB thumb drive. If it does not write, then you will need to actually press certain keys in order to trigger and to select the drive that you wanted to. In this motherboard itself, right, it's in fact the F12 key. I'm just going to show you later. So when you see the flash screen, I will just press F12 to direct the uh, installation on the thumb drive itself. See, this is actually how it looks like. You bring up to this menu, whereby you can actually select which drive to boot up. So uh, since I'm actually installing, right, I will be selecting this, which is actually my thumb drive. Let it load. Now, this is actually the uh, installation of Windows. Just click next then click on install. I will be explaining on whether to actually key in the CD key or not too. Now, if you don't have a CD key, right, you can actually proceed to install, but you will have an irritating activation uh, word at the site over here, which is actually kind of ugly. But for me, right, I've had, I have actually keyed in the CD key and it's actually stored on my Outlook account. And for those of you who actually have an Outlook account, right, um, it's good because it stores your CD key. If not, for those who do not have it right, key in your CD key first, then later on create an Outlook account whereby it will store into your Outlook account. For me, I'm just going to click on I do not have a C product key. 
because I know that it's actually stored on my Outlook account. Then I'll select 11 Pro. Agree with the terms. Click on Custom. Select the drive that you want to install. And this will take some time. If you have come to this page, congratulations. You have safely installed the image on your M.2, which I've actually done it. Now, to select the country that I'm actually at and to configure the, the uh, Windows 11, I'll click on Yes. US keyboard, and I'll skip this. Now, at a point on time, right, it will flicker but do not worry because it's actually installing all the drivers, especially your graphic card. So don't be alert when my screen flickers. Now I'm going to set this as personal usage. Click on next. Now this is the part whereby I've actually explained to you, if you have the uh, CD key key in during the past installation and have uh, an lock in the windows through your outlook account itself right the cd key will be stored on outlook and for those of you who do not have an outlook account key in the cd key and create one outlook uh, account this will be useful reason being right in future if you were to do new builds you don't have to remember the cd key all you need to do right let it install and when it comes to this page lock into your outlook account and that's it now, this is what I meant by flickering. They are actually installing the um, GPU driver for me. That's why you see the flicker there. I'm just going to log into my account. Then, of course, you need to key in your password. Create a pin. It can be alpha numeric up to you. Now for this selection, right? Normally I'll just click all no. I wouldn't want them to actually screen all my data and to diagnose my PC for no reason. This is actually up to personal preference. More like uh, I'm more sensitive to my personal credential so I just click on accept then you can choose this selection here but I'll just skip this and proceed on for this right I'll just store my stuff on this local drive I wouldn't want to actually store on one drive This will definitely take some time. At the initial start, right, it does take some time, probably a few minutes, but once you have actually um, installed the OS itself, right, I can tell you it will be blazing fast. Personally, when I experience the uh, boot up between the uh, Windows 11 and Windows 10, right, it's of a big difference. There you have it, fully installed. And as I mentioned to you, right, this is actually my um, Outlook account. So if I were to check on the version itself, right, see this is actually Windows 11 and the product license is to my Outlook account. Now, how do I actually know that? Because at the activation here, Oh, sorry, I should actually do this. C, 
see if Windows is activated. Okay. See, it's stated down here. Windows is activated with a digital license linked to your Microsoft account. I hope you understand where I'm coming from as in like, why do you need a Microsoft account, which is actually the Outlook.com. So it will definitely store this uh, CD key that you initially did. And when next time, if you want to reinstall the uh, OS itself, right, be it on the same machine or on, on another machine, when you come to that page, the configuration page, make sure you sign in to your Microsoft account. This will pull the CD key to whichever machine that you're using and it will activate for you straight. And for those of you who is actually unaware of this, right, what you can actually do is that at the initial installation, key in your CD key and when you come to that page, create an Outlook account or try to say a Microsoft account, sign in to it and you will definitely store your CD key on that account itself. All right, I'm not going to make this video lengthy. I know that I supposed to show you how to place this system into a case, but um, due to the fact that it's actually pretty lengthy, so I'm going to speed this to the next video. And following up, right, I'll let the system run for probably about one week or so, and I will be digging into undervoting using the PVO2 and to show you what I've done to bring down the temperature. All right, I hope you actually enjoy what I've actually shown you and do come back for more. And for those of you who are new to this channel, do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button. Till then, take care, see you, goodbye.